Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Saturday, December 30th at 10.42 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. Ice Age may hit Earth in 2030. What? 2030? That's like in over a decade. Record cold, heavy snow grips much of the U.S. with more on the way. Guys, 70 million are under extreme cold weather alert currently. Brittle U.S. cold snap is freezing dogs, sharks, and humans to death. There's the shark. Boom! Man, what is this nonsense? We're going to be talking about it. These headlines are going to kill people. Basically saying, you don't have to worry about anything. You got 13 years until it gets cold. Brutal U.S. cold snap is freezing dogs, sharks, and humans to death. And these sharks are off of Massachusetts. That's a thresher shark frozen alive in a pool of water because the ocean froze. Hour by hour, planner in the heartland looks brutal Monday morning at 3 a.m. And there's your wind chill. Minus 44 in Omaha, Nebraska. And that is a Denzel boom. This extreme cold is to test some New Year's revelers and panhandle braces for bitter cold all week. Guys, if you move to Florida to get out of the cold, this week will not be happy for you. Weather experts are warning Northwest Florida residents to brace for potentially bitter cold settling in around New Year's and lasting for the whole week. We're talking low to mid-20s inland beginning Tuesday, and that is going to kill palm trees. The Weather Channel call for lows in the high teens Monday, Thursday, and Friday nights with highs barely reaching freezing. This is going to kill thousands of palm trees that get planted. Every time the weather gets warm, Now, extreme cold to test New Year's revelers. Many events are canceled worldwide because this is deadly cold. Sharks are freezing alive, guys. Why would you stand out at 3 in the morning to watch a glowing ball drop in New York City? I have no idea. You should be in the middle of the woods in complete silence. It is glorious. Extreme cold warnings issued for Toronto as icy Arctic air descends on the province. Environment Canada warning of frigid wind chills. Look at all the severe weather warnings in effect. It's all of Canada. We're talking minus 30s overnight Sunday and again Sunday night. That's for Toronto. What's up, Toronto? Now the city of Calgary is canceling its outdoor New Year's plans due to extreme weather. The cold weather has taken its toll on several Calgary outdoor events. The city of Calgary has decided to cancel New Year's because it's expected to be minus 26 and your flesh freezes at that temperature. So don't be an idiot and freeze your flesh off. Series of Atlantic storms is going to hit Ireland and UK. Storm Dylan is first. It's going to pack 80 kilometer to 100 kilometer winds. There are wind warnings in effect. That's a heads up. This might bring some snow, but freezing rain is more likely. Trinidad and Tobacco are totally fluxed, facing floods amid heavy cosmic ray flux like the rest of the tropics. This is not a new phenomenon. This is just the one that we cover every other day. Local reports that some tributaries of the Caroni River have already exceeded their maximum capacity. This is crop loss, disease, etc. One of our uh, listeners lives uh, in the Yakima Valley, and I'm sure some of our subscribers also li live there. Rattlesnake Ridge is currently sliding. It's a slow slip landslide that it could potentially devastate millions of people's lives. And this is not being picked up by the mainstream because they're keeping it silent. But you can't silence me. Boom! <laughs> and that's a boom for Rattlesnake Ridge residents. They've been evacuated as of 24 hours ago. 
I will leave you links to this. There's very little information on it. You can get in touch with the Yakima County Resource Center for more info. Officials urge 50 residents living near this crack. Look at that. Which is going to send this hill sliding and choke off the valley here. It could clog this valley, which could potentially cause a backup of the Yakima River, a, a, a flood, and all these people would be affected. And that is a geomorphological heads up. And a Denzel boom. <laughs> Spain hit by triple earthquakes. This is in the southern province. They call it the Costa Blanca, the white coast, the southern coast. Excellent climbing, great agriculture, wonderful people. If you want to eat Valencia oranges and olives on the cheap, head out to southern Spain. But these triple earthquakes are not good. The tremor struck Andalusia, or Andalusia, two of the provinces in Malaga, one of the provinces in Cordova. According to Spain's National Geographic Institute, the strongest of the three was a 3.8. Now the problem is, guys, this Malaga region... Earlier this year, seismologists warned that the province of Malaga, where these quakes in this general area occurred, a British holiday hotspot located in the south of Spain, is at risk of being struck by mega earthquakes which could trigger tsunamis. And that's a heads up. Boom. The science behind Joculips. Joculips is part of my uh, graduate work. I took advanced thermodynamics at Temple University uh, during my geological studies. I had an awesome professor who's no longer with us named Dr. Ulmer. And the midterm was one question and we had to calculate the heat budget for the Joculips outwash event, which is this uh, article is about. And my answer, I gave the uh, answer in French fries and I got an, a 4.0 in the class. The answer was a one-word one, one word answer. I had I, The entire blue book had one sentence, and it was like 1.9, 1.8 times 10 to the 23rd French fries at McDonald's. And that's because I happened to know how many kilocalories were in a particular French fry. He loved the answer, and he even shared it with the class. And that's how thermodynamics works. But let's talk about joculeps. Joculips was a subsurface glacial eruption under the ice, which caused massive quantities of water to melt under in a pocket. And then it opened up on the side downstream using the hyd hydrologic gradient and it popped. And the most massive flood ever popped out of the side of the glacier. And we had to calculate the heat budget uh, that melted that volume of water because we knew the volume of water which is kind of interesting. And uh, they have it in here. The assumption, eruption associated with joculips are often those cause the most concern. They tend to occur high above the water table on fairly steep slopes and make them very dangerous. Now, I had the information here. I lost it. It told you that the amount of water running out was equivalent to like all the rivers in the world. The Mississippi, the blah, blah, blah. It's in here. Let's find it. Volcanologist. I did read it earlier. God, I wish I could have highlighted it. Here it is. The eruption of Catala that registered at uh, VEI 5 on the Volcano Index generated a flow rate. This is a 1755-56 eruption that exceeded the mean discharges of the Nile, Mississippi, Amazon, and Yangtze combined. And that's from one single eruption. Boom! And that's the amount of water that shot out of a hole in Iceland. In 1755, which, if you're watching the channel, you know happened in a very special time, right at the end of the Maunder Minimum. Now, Valentina Zarkova has been being quoted all over the planet. I had to uh, translate this article from Spanish. It's in, from South America. And she's not really giving good information. 
Here's another one. Plummeting temperatures could cause mini ice age in 2030. And again, from Sputnik News. This is where she was interviewed recently. It, in the title is Earth is Pretty Prepared for Upcoming Mini Ice Age. Researcher. This is horrible information. This is going to get millions of people killed that don't need to be killed. Because they're going to think there's nothing to worry about until the 2030s. Fluctuations in solar activity could mean a mini ice age on Earth in the 2030s. Which everyone will be dead by then. Why would you worry about that? This is a stupid idea. And I don't know why Professor Valentina Zarkova is giving interviews to this effect. She's saying the planet has natural mechanisms to cope with the mini ice age due to hit Earth in the 2030s as a result of fluctuation in the sun's activity. However, humans need to prepare for the impacts of the cold spell on food supplies. So people are going to be thinking they don't need to prepare for food supplies for 15 years. And that's stupid. I'm starting to lose respect for this woman, except for her scientific work. So guys, let's talk about her work, and then we'll talk about cold times. This is coming from her paper. This blue spike here is cycle 24, the cycle we are currently in. And the cycle after that is weaker than the entire little ice age dynamo effect. If we come over to the charts in our paper, this is the sun dynamo phase relationship. Here we are right now. We're about to be in the bottom of solar cycle 24. And the phase relationship is far off by 2020. It's even equally as far in 2030. Now this phase relationship means that these two time periods are going to be climatically similar, although the 2030 peak is going to be much colder. And why she's saying people shouldn't be preparing now, I have no idea. That is just bad information. And let's come over to all the global warming alarmists that are trolling our site to show them the actual temperature data I know they won't watch the video all the way to the end because they don't. They get so frustrated seeing the scientific information that I present that's irrefutable that they don't know what to do. Here's when Al Gore won his Nobel Prize in 2007. Here are the current temps now. In fact, the November numbers are even lower. They're at 0 0.02 down here. And the December numbers will be lower. And there are three ways to look at this graph. And each of them is in, should be make you more increasingly pissed off that global warming is even in the mainstream. Here are the temperature anomaly on the planet. It shows no deviation from normal whatsoever. From the time Al Gore won his Nobel Prize to 2015, the global temperature fell the entire time. And, I, and it wasn't in one article anywhere in the planet. And now the current temperature, after all the hottest years ever in history, the global current temperature is lower by 0.15 degrees than when Al Gore won the Nobel Prize. The global temperature is, is 0.15 C colder than when Al Gore won the Nobel Prize. <coughs> now, if you do... A linear progression and you start at 2016 you get the red line which is an even steeper decrease in temperature globally and if you do the linear progression starting in 2017 you get the blue line which is an even steeper decline in global temperature depending on how you want to look at it Now, based on the predictions, this is cycle 24. We're right here at the end of the blue. Cycle 25 is predicted to be weaker than the cycle here 
in the Dalton minimum. And cycle 26 is predicted to be weaker than any cycle in the Maunder minimum. And Valentina Zarkova is telling us to not worry until the middle of the 2030s. That's scary. Because by 2020, the crop failures are going to cause hundreds of millions of deaths globally. And it's going to run from there. And that's a heads up. And enough with the Al Gore nonsense. Anyone who's giving him money and doesn't know about this information should be ashamed of themselves. The next 20 years brings us to the center Right? That's in 12 years. The next 12 years are going to be interesting with no one preparing because the mainstream is telling no one to prepare. But Anita Bailey, PhD, is telling you to prepare through her book, Cold Times, which is free to everyone in the world. On the entire planet, this book will be free for 24 hours. Tell your friends, tell your loved ones. January 1st, I will leave the link below. If you don't get it for free, that's on you. Everyone should have this information. We're also giving away hard copies of the book. We're having an essay contest. Send your essays on what you're doing to prepare for the Grand Solar Minimum to oppenheimerranch at gmail.com. We'll share them on air. And we'll send out some books. Hope you got something out of the video. We're going into a cold period that starts now. There are live sharks freezing off the coast of Massachusetts. Omaha is set to be minus 44 at 3 a.m. on Monday. And that's a heads up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Start preparing now. Proper planning prevents piss-poor performance in a catastrophe. And that's where you're living. Be safe, everybody. Survive and thrive.